Hi, good evening everybody. It kind of almost feels strange to be back. Kind of only had one Wednesday off. So tonight's tutorial we're going to be doing peg bags. So I've just used um, two sets of cotton that printed and I plain on this one. Um, and I've used different widths of fabric just so I can tell you how much you will need. Um, and I'm going to use a cotton and um, a linen blend for the tutorial itself tonight. Um, again, just so you can see the difference in them. So I haven't put any interfacing in this, although of course you could do if you wanted it to be a bit stiffer, but the hanger itself and the weight of the pegs should give it structure. Hi everybody, I can see everybody rolling in. Um, so the first thing you're going to need is a coat hanger. I've used children's coat hangers. So I've actually got a pack of these from Home Bargains. These are what I use for the kids' wardrobe, so I've got loads of these. And I think they are something daft like 10 for a pound they are not expensive at all but the the wire ones but they're strong enough to hold your pets and i've also got one of these that we just i just got from the supermarket on monday when i got daisy some new clothes which is just a, a plastic one which i'm a bit snobby and i hate in the wardrobe so i always make sure i give them back to the shop before we uh before we take the clothes but if you've got these lying around then these are a great size so i know a few people said that they didn't have kids coat hangers um so you can use an adult one you will draft the little pattern itself so i'm going to do it straight onto my fabric today but i've also got a brown paper template so if it is something that you think that you might do again and again it might be worth creating a template but of course it will just depend on your hanger now these look like quite different shapes and sizes but i drafted the pattern from this one and that one was hung on that and it looked fine so at the end of the day coat hangers are much for muchness so don't worry too much but it's probably just as easy to draft as you go so the first thing we will do is that and i'm going to use my um my um heat erasable pen for this one so i'll just flip you around and i'm sorry if you lose a little bit of my voice i'm hoping not gosh not been used for a week so I'm going to draft my pattern on my outer fabric, which is my linen. And I've just made sure I put the right sides together. And this one has a bit of a direction. So I'm making sure that, the, that it's going to be facing the right way up by putting my hanger this way up. So I'm just going to place my hanger on and make sure there's a little bit of excess fabric around the outside. Um, if you have got a fabric that is extra wide like this you'll only actually need a fat quarter so if you've got a fabric that's 150 wide you'll just need one one half of it however if you've got a shorter width a fabric that's 115 across you'll need half a meter that's why the um quantities of fabric were a little bit vague so you'll need a ruler or a tape measure and all i'm going to do is all the way around the top is measure a centimeter and a half perimeter i'm just going to mark on here where the neck of the coat hanger is. And I'll tell you why I'm gonna do that in a minute. So I've just marked out the top of my coat hanger and then I'm gonna go in with my ruler. I'm a bit slapdash, I do tend to just um, kind of go by eye. So I'll try and be a bit more accurate while still trying to be speedy. I'm just trying to pull those little divisions and make a smooth line. So I'm doing it on the back of my fabric, but this, like I said, this pen will um, just heat it as out anyway, so I'm not worrying too much. And then I'm going to, so you can either go around the other side and do the same thing, or you can fold it in half. So when I was making my little pattern, I just folded my fabric in half, my, sorry, my paper in half, and just did it so it was symmetrical um but i think probably on camera it'll just be easy just to go around this and try not to bore you all too much so i've 
got my um, top of my um, coat hanger mark type there and then I'm just going to use my set square just because it's a little bit longer so I think it works out about 32 centimeters across that is and my cent my wheel is only 30 centimeters so I'm just going to flip it and use this so from my mark here at one side to the side it's 33 centimeters so all I'm going to do is just draw a nice straight line I'm hoping you can still all see this down all the way to the bottom of my fabric so because it's half a meter it is 50 centimeters deep so i'm just going to take a little bit off the bottom so i'm hoping you can see roughly there what i've done so i've got my shaping at the top here so i've added that extra seam allowance of a centimeter and a half all around that top coat hanger bit oh that does it's looking a little bit scuffy but anyway and then i've just extended my lines down so i've kept that centimeter and a half um continuous down the side so my rectangle so the main main bag itself is 33 centimeters across obviously that will depend on how wide your coat hanger is and i've just gone down at the moment all the way to the bottom of the fabric which is a little bit long so i'm going to cut this out so i'm going to put some um pins in there and just cut my shape out and then i'm going to cut a little bit of length off at the bottom of your bag it obviously is completely up to you how deep you have them but i'm probably going to cut about three centimeters off the bottom just so it's not too long and obviously your hand's not trying to find those pegs enough with that side of my half meter to do another peg bag or of course do something else with so i've got my shape now and i've still got those markings on because i want to leave a gap when i come to join these up obviously to fit my coat hanger through so what it's worth doing is just working out the widest part of that neck so obviously you can wangle your coat hanger in but to make it easier so i'm just going to put a couple of markings on there and then i know roughly how much i need to leave to fit my coat hanger through there so this pattern now is going to become the template for the lining fabric so this was a bit more fabric greedy because the um, plain fabric, the lining fabric, the cotton, is um, 115 centimetres wide. So I'm going to use a little bit more of it so I couldn't get a peg bag out of a fat quarter. But of course, obviously, it is that bit cheaper. So I'm just going to readjust those pins. And cut all of those layers now. So that's all the pieces cut and now the first thing we need to do is create that hand hole for the pegs to go in. So I'm going to take one layer of um, linen and one layer of um, plain cotton which is my line and just put them those to one side. So I'm actually going to layer up and I'm going to have my um, outer fabric and my lining fabric right sides together. I'm just going to put a couple of pins in. So 
So whatever template you use is up to you. I've got the lid off a juice jug and it's about five inches in diameter or 12 and a half centimetres, which is nice to get my hand in. So what I did, this probably seemed a little bit silly, is I put my hand in the jug and just to just to see if um, my hand comfortably fit in there. There's nothing worse than, I could give you an example, of making your lovely peg bag and then having a gap hole that's too small and constantly fighting your way in. So if hubby does hand, um, hangs the washing out and he's got big hands then your circle might want to be bigger so i've got four layers of fabric all together debbie's just asked so i've got two lining and two outer fabric so i've got two linen and two cotton and i'm just taking one of each for this hand hole so this will be the front of my bag so i'm just going to put my hanger back on there because what i want to do is i want to put my hole somewhere where it's not going to be kind of where, where this isn't going to affect it so if you have a hanger like that you've obviously got a little bit more flexibility because you've not got this bar going across there but obviously you do want to get into the bag so you don't want the hat the hole to be too high so again i'm going to probably put it about five inches from the top of my fabric which is just under where that bar is sitting and i'm going to use the heat erasable or air erasable pen or it could be a tailor's chalk this is going to be sewing line so you want to be able to see it but obviously you don't want to see it if you've got particularly light fabric I'm just going to twizzle that around um, you don't want to see it once you've uh, finished sewing although it will be on the inside so that is the first thing we're going to sew i've managed to get the lid of my pen stuck in the lit in there the end so it won't fit on so that's a I'll pop that to one side. So, of course, there isn't a seam allowance because I'm just going to be sewing on my pen line. So, my plain fabric doesn't have a right side. It's just plain, but if you did, it'd be right sides together. Then now this feels a little bit strange, does this process. And you probably go through a step where you think, oh my God, what have I done? I've done something wrong. And it does look a little bit weird, but just roll with it, I promise. And and this is the bit that might come in handy for next week. So for the, um, for the clutch bags. So I'm just sewing on that line. And then when I get back to my original stitches, I'm just going to go over them by about three, then send it into reverse and then forwards again, just to seal it all up. And just cut those threads off. So what I'm going to do for this now is I'm just going to fold it in half. I didn't I didn't even check that it was central there. I just I just did it so you might want to check by it by uh, a bit more thoroughly than I did that you were uh, have got uh, got your hand hole in the center that's me all over that sort of slapdash so what I'm doing is I'm just cutting about a centimeter away from the stitching line and I've just done it quite neatly because these little circles here you will definitely be able to fit a nice makeup remover remover pad on one of these. They're the perfect size. So I'm not wasting that fabric and kept that. I've got my little circles, quite an, a, an apt one for my makeup remover pads. And then I'm going to um, start to clip into this curved seam. So you want to make sure you've got really sharp scissors and just want to use the tips of them just really carefully. And you're going to snip as close to those stitches as you dare 
and you probably want to do them about every centimetre, centimetre and a half. The closer you get to that circle, to those stitches, the better the impact will be because it will allow your fabric to spread. So if you just keep rotating. The danger is if you use the sharp bit here is that you're going to go through your stitches and obviously this is kind of like the main focus of your peg bag. Although I'm sure people aren't going to come around and scrutinise your peg bag. It is nice to have... It looking pretty so if you're doing the neckline on a dress or an armhole something like that this is exactly what you would do just keep going round feels like the never-ending circle does this so I'm probably so probably clipping to about a millimeter I really am getting close and you'll know if you've not clipped close enough because you'll see the, the fabric will just pull, it won't be as, as relaxed. And you'll see that little bit of stress on it and it just sort of crinkles it up. Right, there we are. So now it'll kind of go through the stage where you just think, right, what on earth am I doing? So I'm just gonna feed the fabric, the lining fabric through that hole. Like that. So it sits on the inside, which is how obviously it will be in the end. And I'm just going to rub that fabric and just make sure it does fit, feel nice and smooth. Like I said, you will know if you've not cut close enough to your stitching line because you will feel that kind of, you'll see little kind of wrinkles and crinkles. Now I'm quite happy with that. It's sitting nice and flat. And I'm going to give that a little press. It's very quickly. So I'm just going to do a little bit of top stitching. This is optional. I didn't do it on my cotton one, but this is a little bit of a heavyweight fabric. Although it should be fine, that, that core hanger should just keep it in place. I'm just going to do a little bit of top stitching. So I'm going to stitch about half a centimetre, if that, away from that raw edge, just to hold everything down. And there isn't particularly, I have to say, a good place to start or finish. Um, I'm just going to go all the way around there, I'm trying to keep my peg bag as flat as possible. Ooh, ooh, cracky, sorry. And then when you get back to the beginning, just again, those reverse stitches. Not in an ideal place for me. I don't know why I started on the darkest bit of my fabric, but hey ho. I'll have to peg a peg to it or something. So that's kind of the, that's the fiddly bit really done because that's what everyone's going to see so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to move my linen out of the way like that and i'm going to take my lining piece and i'm going to lay right sides together so if there was a right side to my um fabric i'll be putting those together now and i'm just trying to match everything up i'm going to put some pins just through those layers of turquoise not through the linen so I'll flip it over in a minute and then you can see what the back's looking like. And all I just need to be aware of is just trying not to catch the linen and just remembering my gap for my coat hanger at the top. So this is what it looks like on the other side. So I'm just going to tuck that out of place. So if you're, you've got quite a big coat hanger and it doesn't fit through this gap like that, 
for the top, then you will need to leave a gap in the bottom of your bag. If your coat hanger quite comfortably fits through that hole, I mean, obviously you probably need to manoeuvre the fabric a little bit, a bit like when we're putting clothes on, but if it quite comfortably fits through there, then we'll be sewing all the way around the peg bag, leaving that gap at the top. So I'm just gonna fold that in there and there and there. And if your fabric's bouncing back, then just pop a little pin just to keep it into place. Now, if you've gone for two quite stiff fabrics and you don't think the gap here is going to be big enough, again, you could just leave a little hands width gap in the, in the um, lining. So let's give people that option too. So just enough to turn your fabrics. If you do it in the lining, it means that's where your um, top stitching or hand stitching will be and you won't be visible on the outside of the bag and I put all my little markings on here so I'm just going to transfer those to my lining just to remind myself where I want to be sewing between oh god a stupid pen can't believe I've done that so I'm going to use a centimetre seam line. So I added a centimetre and a half when I did my um, measuring. So I'm going to use a centimetre seam line. So I've got an extra centimetre just so it's not too snug on that coat hanger. In fact, my needle position's in the wrong place. So I'm going to start that again. There we go. And then when I'm approaching that marker there for where I left the gap for my um, coat hanger hook, I just want to stop and do those securing stitches. So I'm just gonna do three stitches backwards and three stitches forwards and just cut off and start again. almost back to the beginning and I'm just gonna again finish at that uh, at that pin so one two three backwards and then forwards again so I'll take all those pins out So unfold my linen like that and now it's the turn to just tuck the um, lining fab the uh, lining fabric out of the way so I'm just going to tuck that in just to reduce the chances of sewing it to itself which I could totally see happening and we are right sides together of the linen. So we've got less markings to put on or less things to remember because of course we've left that gap if you needed one. So I'm just going to be focusing on the gap that I need to leave at the neck of the um, coat hanger where the, the little hook of the coat hanger is going. So 
forgot to take a little bit off my length so we shall see if this is too big and too deep then I can obviously always do some fiddling around with that and just take some off so I'm going to start here now because that's the only gap that I'm going to leave and again I'm using my centimetre seam allowance guide And then just there, as I approach that marker again, I'm going to do my securing stitches. Now on my cotton bag, I pulled everything, all my, my bag back through there. So you want to make sure they're really quite tough, and especially if you've got um, quite a, a thick fabric like the linen. But of course, I have left that little hand gap, so I can use that. But make sure it's, it's nice and tough and reinforced. So that's all the pins out. And again, it's probably going to go through that stage where it all does look a bit bizarre. And we're going to be pulling it through there. So you want to push your linen or your outer fabric. Sorry, I keep hitting the tripod. Through that gap at the bottom. And like a scrunched up mess and you'll just think, oh God, what's going on here? I'm sure. Just give yourself an opportunity to push all your corners out and things like that. So definitely looking weird at the moment. And then I'm going to push my lining fabric through that hand hole. So it definitely needs a good iron <laughs> just to create that shape, just to reinforce it. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of snipping around the neck of the um the the bag where your coat hanger is going to go so let's grab the ironing board So definitely my least favourite bit, but definitely makes a big difference. Oh, sorry. Ooh. Okay, they think of uh, where to put the uh, tripod. So I'm just trying to push and stretch all the seams to the side. And just give that a nice press just to, just to get that shape back. So at the top, I'm got, what I want to do is I want to try and encourage if I push my um, outer fabric, my linen, just back in on itself, which it will sit pretty nicely like that and just give it a press. Um, you could do a little hand stitch hem if you wanted to. But what you might find is that the lining fabric, when you put your coat hanger in, just wants to push itself out. So I'm just going to pop my coat hanger in. And when I push that through... 
sometimes you can the lining fabric wants to peep through too so if it doesn't it looks a little bit messy like that and you can sort of see it coming through probably not too bad but it definitely could probably do with a bit of clipping so i'm just going to turn it back on itself and just give it a little clip so take this hanger out and I just want to peep through to the inside and where you stop sewing here and you drew your little lines on if you just clip into that seam there so let's get my excess threads out of the way Whoop. so the line that you stop sewing at if you just put a little clip in there like that and then the same at the other side like that it should just make it easier to encourage that lining fabric to fold back on itself. Put my hanger back in. This is not very easy to show. <laughs> Probably need to just turn it back out on itself. Yeah, I think I'm just going to do that. I think that'll be easier to uh, to show you all what I'm trying to get at. So, just being a bit uh, you, as usual. I'm just being my lazy self. So I've put those clips in there like that, and what it'll make it easy to do is just fold that back like that and give it a press. And then again, flick, flick it out where I've clipped it and then tuck it back in. And it will just make, just, just encourage those raw edges, those fraying bits of fabric just to stay in when it's the right way around. And then everything will look a little bit neater on that top edge. Like I said, you could hand stitch if you wanted to. But I am not a hand stitcher and I will always profess this, how lazy I am. There we go. So, let me flip you back. Gosh, I don't know, where, where are you? Where am I? I'm back, back on. Oh, it's so stiff. Is this uh, is this tripod? God, I'm all wonky, aren't I? What am I doing? There we go. So that is your peg bag. Obviously, if you um, didn't trust fitting all of your peg bag through that gap, you have still got a little gap in the bottom of your peg bag. So all you need to do is pull your lining out. And you can do one of two things. Obviously, if you left this in, then you could have some like escapee pegs. It's just to fold it back on the seam allowance line and give it a little press and just top stitch that into place. Of course, you could do quite a nice little um, slip stitch in there, but I am a lazy bones, so I'm gonna be top stitching that. I'll probably change my thread color to turquoise so that it does match, um, but I think I'll just stick with a little machine stitch because, of course, once I've tucked it back in, it's just going to go right to the bottom of my peg bag, never really to be seen again. So I think they are a really simple and effective little make. I think on the linen, because they're a little bit less, uh, they behave a little bit less, I think I'm going to need a little hand stitch there. Um, so I think it's it's definitely... An improvement and don't judge me too much but this is our existing peg bag how awful is this 
I think that um, there is a massive, massive improvements in our peg bag game there. So um, just a really nice one. And I don't think that's too deep. I'm quite happy with that. More pegs, more, the more the merrier. So whether you are using um, some quite stiff fabrics or some nice soft fabrics, um, plastic hangers, metal hangers, whatever you've got, big or small, this principle is fairly similar. So roughly my the dimensions of my beginning fabric were half a meter, 50 centimeters tall and about 33 centimeters wide. So on a large fat quarter or wide fabric, you'll be able to fit that on a fat quarter and on the short ones, you'll need a little bit more. So I hope you enjoyed that make and I can't wait to see these. Hopefully in the uh, lovely sunshine, spring sunshine, um, and just remember that technique of cutting out that hole because next week we are doing clutches and if you want to make it for a nappy clutch it's really nice to have that little hole there to pull your wipes out obviously if you're using it for other uses you might not want it but a handy little technique to have so I hope you liked it and I shall look forward to seeing you all next Wednesday with more bag making um, tips and tricks